Hey, it's Alina from XM8 Mastery, and today we're going to be continuing our Time Saver series by talking about preferences, how you can set up background default settings that will help save you time, and catch things like resequence line numbers and some other issues. So let's go take a look. So here we are in the Control Center dashboard of Xactimate. You can see that here. And where we want to be is in the Preferences section of the Control Center. So right next door to Dashboard is this sub-tab that says Preferences. Now in Preferences, all they are are default settings that allow you to set up defaults for your estimates. For example, if you're ABC Roofing and you always want ABC Roofing Company header, opening statement, and overhead and profit to be added to each estimate without you lifting a finger, that's where preferences will save you time. Also, there is a section here which will allow Xactimate to prompt you to resequence your line numbers without you ever thinking about it. So that one has saved me many times because sometimes I forget to resequence my numbers and then my estimates all out of order and looks really silly. So let's go take a look here at what we can do in our preferences. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your settings here off to the left are on profile and not environment. Okay, profile is where we want to be. Then here under profile you're going to have to do it for both the carrier and the contractor. So once you set it up for the carrier, go ahead and run through and just do it all over again for your contractor. Then I want this right here next to user to say all users. Trust me, if you just have yourself here, some of these options that I'm going to show you will not show up. So you want all users to be here next to the user column. So a lot of these preferences are for adjusters and we don't really need to look through each one or each section. I'm just going to show you the ones that will make you the biggest difference and be the biggest time savers for you as a contractor. So first of all, let's go to reports. Under reports is where you're going to find the resequence line number prompt on print. Okay, so this means that every time I go to create a PDF doc of my estimate, when I click on that print button, it's going to go ahead and ask me if I want to resequence. So never will I ever send up an estimate with the numbers out of sequence. So go ahead and check that box. That's a real lifesaver. Next, I want you to go on down under Project and go to Defaults. This is where you can set up your zip postal code matching, meaning when you enter a new postcode or zip code in an estimate, it'll try to find the correct price list for that area, so that's a nice one to check off. Also, to make sure your labor minimums are being applied at the end of your estimate, very important. Then we've got our overhead and profit default, so I never have to add that 10 and 10 in my parameters. It's always there, which is amazing. Then you can add your default company header. If you want to set yourself as the claim rep for every estimate going forward, you can do that here as well. And um, those are the two settings I would change there. Also, I want you to go ahead and change your auto save interval minutes to one. I think the default is five. A lot can happen in five minutes. You can get a lot accomplished. So this is a default auto save that's going on in the background that if Xactivate crashes, it will create a restore point for you in the background. So we definitely want that set at one. One is the lowest we can go there for that. Next, the settings I'd like you to go ahead and look at is model statements. Go ahead and click there and you'll see that you can use defaults as well for your opening and closing statement. In my Xactimate training, I always teach that you should be using an opening statement. Uh, lots of reasons to do that. You know, and introduce the adjuster as to why ONP should be paid copyright your estimate, all kinds of things can be done with your opening and closing statement. So once you set one up, you can set it up here as the default, and now any estimate going forward that you open will have that opening statement pre-filled in for you. These next set of preferences are for those of you that use Sketch. I'm going to try to save you some time and effort here. So we're going to go under Sketch and we're going to go to System. And even if you don't use Sketch, go ahead and run through these preferences with me and set these up because when you do in the event have to use Sketch, it'll make your life quite a bit easier. So first thing we're going to do is go under Sketch and go to System right there on that grouping tree. 
And under the handle size, I like to bump this up to 12 or even 14. So a handle is what moves a room's measurements, and there's four handles usually on each edge of the roof or on each wall. And the pixels can be kind of hard to grab, or the uh, handle can be hard to grab. So we like it to be larger, and 12 to 14 is usually good. Any bigger than that, all you can see is handles, you can't see anything else. So we don't want it to be too uh, large there to grab the handle. So 12 to 14 seems to be the sweet spot. Also, side note, anybody who uses a disto laser distance meter that has Bluetooth technology in, uh, enabled in it, you can also enable the disto laser distance meter. It can sketch rooms for you, and uh, maybe that'll be a video for me in the future, but that is there for anybody who, who uses the disto la laser distance meter. Uh, you've got that checkbox there. The next set of preferences we're going to go ahead and look at is under View, and this is where you can change your base font size and your measurement font size. Those are kind of small for me. I like them to be, again, 12 to 14. So those help with reading the measurements. Sometimes they all get piled on top of each other. So if your, your font sizes are too big, if you're having a problem seeing them uh, because they're too big, then you need to go in here and turn them down. But usually they're too small, so I like them to be around 12. And yes, it does make a difference just with that little bit of extra font sizing. And last but not least, we've got our door and window defaults. Maybe you're working in an area where you have a custom style home and they have higher door heights. You can change the default door height here so that you don't have to keep on going into the properties of the door and changing the, the door height. Um, same with your windows. Maybe you work in an area that's 4040, so you want to change the width of the window down to 4, and that'll be your new default window width. Also, if you want to deduct your windows from wall calculations, if you are trying to get a more true measurement with that the window or door calculations deducted. You can also check that off here. Again, so you don't have to go into the preferences and deduct your doors and windows. That's a big time saver for those that use Sketch and need to deduct those areas. And last but not least, if you want to deduct a missing wall if the area is greater than like 10 square feet, you could do that here if you wanted the program to do that. So yes, deduct it only if it's larger than a certain square footage, and that way you get a more accurate siding or interior paint estimate instead of it being way out of proportion. If you have large openings, it'll account for those, and you'll have a more accurate estimate. So that pretty much takes care of it for our preferences. Again, please go ahead and fill out the carrier and the contractor profile. Make sure that all users stays selected here in this drop down box or else some of these options will not be available to you so make sure all users is selected. By the way I also want to mention that you don't have to click save anywhere in here it's auto saving like your smartphone does whenever you change a setting it's auto saving that feature so do not worry about having to click save and then I also wanted to let y'all know that you should be clicking over here to dashboard otherwise you might feel a little bit lost if you close Xactimate and come back here it may open in preferences. Let's go ahead and get you back over here to your dashboard and there everything looks pretty normal and we're good to go. This has been Alina Wilson with XM8 Mastery. If you like this topic, go ahead and like this video. Also, if you would feel free to comment below about any preferences that you have set up that maybe I glossed over or missed, I'd love to hear from you. For more about XM8 Mastery and our Xactimate training, go to www.xm8mastery.com. Hope you guys have a really great week, and uh, we'll see you next Tuesday.